Good evening and welcome to St. Thomas More. We're happy that you have joined us for this afternoon's Mass. We have these announcements. Please mark your calendars for our parish picnic. It will take place Sunday, August 28th, starting at noon on the lower level of the church. A reminder that information and registration materials for Summer Vacation Bible School to be held August 1st through the 4th is in the gathering space and on the parish website. Also, you can find the kindergarten through eighth religious education online registration instructions on the table back in the gathering space. Now please stand and greet those around you as we prepare to celebrate the mass together. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. Come together on a beautiful day, and a uh, beautiful day is appropriate time for the celebration of baptism. So I'd ask uh, family to come forward and introduce your child to us with your godparents. Zachary and Carla Walrod, what name have you given your child? Sawyer. And what do you ask of God's church for Sawyer? You've asked to have your child baptized and undertaking the responsibility of training her in the practice of the faith so that keeping God's commandments, she may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? And godparents, are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as Christian parents? Then Sawyer, the church receives you with great joy in its name, I sign you with the sign of the cross of Jesus our Savior. Then after me, your parents and godparents will do the same. <laughs> you can do it too. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, and let's all sign ourselves with the mark of our faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth.
O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thanks. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would hear, heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up into the sky and get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that we should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it so that we may carry it out? No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts you have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, life everlasting. Your words are spirit and life, O oh Lord, richer than
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross. Through him whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied to him, you've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, 
he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped him and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who is my neighbor? It's the question the uh, uh, lawyer asks Jesus to, to justify his answer about loving God and loving your neighbor being what you have to do. Who is my neighbor? But it's also a good question for us to reflect on. Who are our neighbors? You know, I think probably that answer has changed over time. We have become pretty uh, self-reliant. We don't have neighborhoods the way we once did. You know, when I was growing up, I, I remember it was those houses that were closest to us. You know, people that we really knew well and, and, and shared so much with. In fact, you know, when I was growing up, we actually had a party line phone. <laughs> It was not a party. <laughs> we were, uh, whatever, five of us, five houses, that all shared the same telephone. I mean, you think about that, it's quite different nowadays when we all have our own personal phones that go with us everywhere we go. But uh, we were one long and two shorts. That was our ring, you know. <laughs> and uh, every house had its own distinctive ring. And, and if you wanted to make a phone call, you often had to wait until someone else was done before you could pick up the phone to call somebody. Anyway. We knew our neighbors well. <laughs> and unfortunately, they probably listened into our conversations too and knew us well. We know, knew who our neighbors were. I think also, you know, neighbors came in handy. They watched over our place if we were gone. Neighbors, you know, I can remember, mom might be cooking some evening and missing some ingredient, and she'd call the neighbors and we'd run and borrow it from them, you know? We knew who our neighbors were. Do we know who our neighbors are now? What does it mean to be neighbor? You know, I, I think it means different things for different cultures and different people and different times. But for the Jews of Jesus' day, it meant someone who was like you. Your neighbor was your fellow Jew. And that was really the law. So when the, the lawyer asked Jesus, who's my neighbor, he really was expecting Jesus to say, your fellow Jew. He wanted there to be limits to that responsibility, that you didn't have to, to go much farther than that. And that's where you could stop being neighbor. That would have been the legal answer. But notice the, the whole scriptures this weekend. Jesus uh, reminds us that the law isn't just something written in a book. Well, that beautiful first reading, you know, Moses is telling his people as they're about to enter into the promised land, the law should be something that's in your heart. The law is something that shouldn't be hard to understand or far away. When you're moved with compassion, you should live that mercy. That's living the law of God. Well, that's not what the lawyer expected. So Jesus tells this beautiful story of, of the Good Samaritan. And what's interesting about that, it was the Jew's bitter enemy. There was great animosity between the Jews and the Samaritans. But yet he's the one who acted with compassion, acted with mercy towards a wounded Jewish person. 
wasn't the Levite, or it wasn't the priest. Now, legally speaking, you know, they probably were concerned about becoming ritually impure as people who worshipped in the temple, the Levite, the priest, they, they, they would have to be very cautious about that. If they came in contact with a dead body, they wouldn't be allowed to, to offer worship, or offer sacrifice. So obviously, you know, they're going to avoid, but that's the law that allowed them to do that. That's the written law. Jesus does talk about a higher law, the law that's in your heart. The hard, law that, he, that that first reading says isn't hard to understand. It's very close to you, very near to you. And that's what the Good Samaritan follows, a law of love. How would we tell that story today and have that same shock value that it must have had for the Jewish person hearing it for the first time? I mean, think about that. That was really shocking to have your enemy. There was great animosity between the the Jews and the Samaritans, all having to do with something eight centuries before when when the the, the Jews in the northern kingdom uh, intermingled with the Assyrians and and they were considered impure. But that um, animosity only grew. You know, there's a story that's told about the the, the Samaritans actually going into the temple and, and, and throwing dead bones around right before the Passover. So the temple was not able to be cleansed before Passover, and they weren't able to celebrate Passover. I mean, the, an animosity between the two. How would we tell that story today to create that same shock value that that must have had in that day? Who would the Good Samaritan be? Would it be a homeless person, maybe? Maybe a, a transgender person? A migrant? Anyone we think about that we have a tendency to want to marginalize. And that's the shock value of the story. Maybe more to the point, who might be a bitter enemy? Maybe if it's a Russian soldier who helps a wounded Ukrainian. Maybe a member of a hate group tending to a victim of racism. I mean, think about the shock that, that we might use today to see someone acting with compassion towards a person that's an enemy. But today we are called to remember that the law of God that's in our hearts really is a law that asks us to be compassionate, to recognize our neighbor as anyone in need. You know, the road to Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho, was a narrow, it still is today, I'm told, descends some 3,000 what, 3,000, uh, the altitude decreases that much, that many feet as you go down below sea level. It goes down to where the Dead Sea is. Still a dangerous road today. But you know that road from Jericho to Jerusalem, it also exists in our world. Passes right through our homes, our, our parish, our schools, our workplaces. The road to Jericho is any place where people are robbed of their dignity, their material goods, their value. It's a place where there's still suffering and oppression. And Jesus invites us to walk those roads with hearts of love. What God wants more than anything is for us to show that love to each other, wherever we are. But you know what's interesting about the question? Jesus kind of turns it around. The, the Samaritan asks, who is my neighbor? Jesus makes it a different question, doesn't he? He says, who is neighbor? Who is neighbor to the man who was robbed? In other words, who are you? I hope we answer that question in a way that says we are people who also act with compassion. We also, as he says, go and do the same. People who work that We can be a society that's based not on exclusion, but on community. Not on hatred, but on love. Let's pray as we reflect on that story of the Good Samaritan. And we look to be Good Samaritans in our world today. Let's pray. Lord, help me to be a good neighbor. A good neighbor to all.
as a community that supports one another and strives to imitate Jesus as one who lived the law of love. Let's stand and sing our litany of saints as we accompany the wall rods to the baptismal font. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mary and Joseph, pray for us. Brothers and sisters, let us ask God to give this child new life in abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Almighty God and Father. You created water to cleanse and give life. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son. You poured forth water and blood from your side so that from your death and resurrection the church might be born. Blessed are you, God, the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan so that we all might be baptized into you. By the mystery of this blessed water, graciously lead to spiritual rebirth your servants, called to the faith of the church, that this child may have eternal life. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring him up in the practice of the faith so that the life that God gives him is kept safe from sin to grow always stronger in his heart. So if your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility and mindful of your own baptism, I invite you to renounce sin, profess your faith in Jesus Christ. This is the faith of the church, the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. We all renew our baptismal promises by saying with you, I do. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and life everlasting? I do. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Zachary and Carla, Carly, <laughs> Is it your will that Sawyer should be baptized into the faith that we've all professed with you? Okay, so. Maybe take off her bow so I don't get it wet. <laughs> Sawyer Lynn, I'm going to get in front of the cameras. <laughs> Sawyer Lynn, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin and given you a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and joined you to his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation that you may remain always a member of Christ's body, priest, prophet, and king until eternal life. Here you go, Sawyer. That helps. <laughs> Sawyer, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in the white garment you wear the outward sign of your Christian dignity with family and friends to help you by word and example bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Godparents delight from the Paschal candle. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened, my Christ. May she walk always as a child of the light. And persevering in the faith, may she run out to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the mute to speak. May he touch your ears to receive God's word and your mouth to proclare God's praise to the glory of God the Father. Dearly beloved, this child has been reborn in baptism, is now a child of God. Let's congratulate her parents and welcome her. Please stand as we sing our blessing song. God is full of compassion and mercy. We pray for all those lying in wait for the care of a neighbor. For the church, that our deeds of compassion and loving service may be signs of God's presence and action in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For insight, that God will help us recognize our neighbor in the refugee, the homeless person, and the marginalized of society and inspire our response to their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who care for those in need, that those working in outreach ministries, housing assistance, health care, pregnancy centers, or refugee centers may continue to bring God's love and compassion to those whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those communities affected by gun violence, that those suffering loss will find comfort and healing and for a greater resolve to end the scourge of violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for parish member Bridget Barba and for Judy Goodenkoff, mother of parish member Tom Goodenkoff, that they be welcomed into the joy of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those children baptized this weekend, for Sawyer, Calliope, Corbin, Miles, and Gabrielle, that they always find support from our community 
in their journey of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we pause to bring to God in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, you created the world in wisdom and love, and you showed us that love in Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers. Help us to live like him as good neighbors to all in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of all us Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayers to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring even greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift the hearts of the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. So, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Share that peace with each other.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter under my roof. I will say the word and the sins shall be shown to you. Joyful. 
Let us pray. <coughs> Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. God has chosen me, God has chosen me. God's song.